Welcome back. In this video, we'll look at the for each function as well as the map function. And now that we know what an anonymous function is, these for each and the map functions will be really helpful in our applications. So let's start off with an example. I will have a list declared. And inside of the list, I will have 20, 30, and 40. Now, if I want to print this out, let's say var item in list. And I print it out. I can print out these items. And if I run it, we will get 20, 30, and 40. So this is how we normally print out or run through items inside of a list. But we can also use the for each function to help us. So I can go to list and use the for each function. Now, if you look at the for each function, you can see it accepts a function that accepts an integer and returns back nothing. So that's exactly what our anonymous functions did for us. So now, because we know that, we can add our own function in here in order to do what we want to do. So I can declare my anonymous function, let's say item, use the fat arrow there, and say I want to print them out, every item in the list. And that's basically all I need is this one line. And it will do exactly the same as this for in loop did for me. Just remember that I'm not restricted to the fat arrow there. I can in fact create a body for this function by just adding the curly braces. Because we're not returning anything, you can just add your semicolon. And by reformatting it, it will look something like this. So now I can have print item or maybe doing something before that. But if you're going to do this and not using the fat arrow, then probably your for in will be a lot better to use. But just be reminded that you can use your for each there. Even a lot easier than doing all of this, we could have said for each and just go and call the print function there. Because the print function actually accepts any object like we did in the previous video, it can also accept integer values or a function that can accept integer values. And in our case, that's exactly what this for each does. It wants a function that accepts an integer. So if I run this now, I will get exactly the same output. Now let's look at the map function. I'm going to cut it from there and just add it there. Right, so for this example, I'm going to use a new list. Let's call this one halves. So I want to create a new list where I am basically dividing the values inside of this by two and assigning it to another list. So I'm going to say something like list.map. Now, if you click on the map there, you can see that this map, I'm just going to hide the errors now, uh, actually returns back an iterable and it accepts a function that accepts an integer and it can return any type. So this T there is in fact your generic, so it's basically saying it could return back an iterable of any type and the function inside could return any type of value. But the function itself that you're passing in must be accepting an integer. So let's do our own function here. I'm going to have a value there. I'm going to use the fat arrow. And what I want to do is to take the value and divide it by two. So what will happen here inside of the list We've got these values, 20, 30, and 40. The map helps us to get that specific value, the 20, 30, and the 40, and then doing something with it and returning it. So in this case, we're going to take the value as it is, divide it by 2, and return it back. And what it returns back for me is an iterable. So you can see it's an iterable of doubles. So what is an iterable? We've had a previous video where we talked slightly about this. An iterable is a collection of elements that can be accessed sequentially. So your lists and sets that we did previously are iterables and they can access values using a for in loop. Okay, so in this case, if we print out this now, print halves, let's run it. You can see it prints out the iterable for me, and that's 10, 15, and 20, which is half of what we have there. So it's 100% the calculation that we wanted. 
but this is not a list this is an iterable now if you click on halves again you will see that it is an iterable if you click on map you can see it returns a new lazy iterable so what a lazy iterable is is basically only when we print this out will it do this calculation so it won't do this calculation on this line only when you use this variable somewhere will it actually do this calculation and that's what we call a lazy iterable so we can also try and print it out like this let's say four bar item in halves and let's print it out and you can see now it works exactly like a list but again this part will only be calculated as soon as you are using it in the for loop if you want to have this calculated way before you actually try and print out something then you can also go and say well i want to convert this to a list and if i say to list this halves will now become a list and now you can see it changed it's now a list of double values previously it was just an iterable so by converting this to a list you are also forcing this calculation to directly calculate right so just again what does the map function do it takes in an anonymous function and whatever you want to do with that values you can do with it inside of the anonymous function it doesn't need to be only one line with the fat arrow it can be more using the curly braces and it basically makes another version of a list for you that you can go and save somewhere else but it will now contain the new values as you change them thanks for watching the video see you in the next one